Choose your command. You have chosen the Face Off Hockey Show. Click, click, whoa. If you've been listening to our show for the past 20 some odd years, then you know our affinity for ramps behind the net and uh, how much we love that. And that's a big uh, part of our childhood that we wanted to bring into adulthood. Uh, but we never found the way to do so. But luckily, our uh, friends over at Sinbin Studios have uh, been able to try to capture this. And it looks like they are about to put something out here this spring for Pro Beach Hockey. Uh, Pro Beach Hockey Sun. Uh, Sun Surf and Slap Shots were joined now by the director, Jake Simperman. Jake, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful and uh, about to be better if we're talking about uh, roller hockey in the 90s. Yes, absolutely. Something that for, for uh, Johnny and I, part of our childhood, and, and Mark, when he jumps in here too, part of our childhoods that we remember on ESPN. Uh, how did this? How did this come about for you? Is this something that you remember in your childhood? Is this something that you kind of were like, "Whatever happened to everything?" And where can I get these ramps for the back of my nets? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, and I'll I'll try to I'll try to give you a, an abridged version here. But um, I I did live in California, Southern California, during the late '90s. I was I was a child with my family, but. Um, I have a very kind of fuzzy memory of attending these games in Huntington Beach and being sort of mesmerized by the ramps and the cheerleaders and just sort of the whole atmosphere of the whole thing. And, you know, simultaneously, I was playing roller hockey and ice hockey. So there was a really sort of uh, unique, you know, it was a unique time to live in Southern California and, and roller hockey and roller blading felt like it was really at this was one of them. This is one of the things that I was able to really research and, um, you know, come up with a story and a narrative and start connecting with people. And I just, like you guys said, I wondered where this went and, you know, why it got canceled and who the heck came up with this crazy idea. And I, and I, you know, eventually after doing all this research, I thought, I can't believe no one's told this story before. And then I realized, I guess I have to be the one to do it. Well, it's good someone was able to do it, someone who actually lived through it, too, because I know I tried to do it when I was in Calgary, and that was hard to come by because it seemed like a lot of the history, at least back in the primitive Internet days, not a lot there. How did you find it in terms of trying to gather up information, trying to hunt down players, their whereabouts, and any kind of archives? Because it seemed like a very tight-knit, especially with ESPN, the worldwide leader, not usually uh, forthcoming with a lot of their archives. Yeah, and I think that was <laughs> – you kind of hit the – nail on the head. I mean, curating archival assets was a multi-year process. I mean, it really took two, three years to get the footage and the photos and the articles that we needed to tell the story. And, you know, kind of going back to, to early 2020, when I started this, um, it was sort of convenient that everyone was locked down and just sitting at home because, that really allowed me to connect with all these players. And, you know, you start with one player and then he introduces you to another player. And then you're introduced to someone that worked on the show. And then you're introduced to someone, you know, so it's just kind of this big web that kept growing. Um, and luckily everyone was by, by their phone and COVID. So I was able to have like these really extensive conversations with people involved in the league. And I think I must've talked to 30 to 40 uh, different people in, involved in roller hockey. And then we ended up interviewing uh, about 25 of them for the film. Um, and again, it was kind of made a little bit more convenient because I don't know if it wasn't for COVID, if I could, could reach all these people and, and they would give me, you know, an hour of their time. So that was kind of the process for finding the interview subjects. And then and in terms of gathering the archival assets, that was, uh, a, a totally different experience in that, you know, a lot of the time you are asking people, strangers, uh, what that, you know, what VHS tapes they have and really just trying to grab anything you can find from this era. Um, but that's why it was fascinating to me is because this was sort of pre Y2K and like very early internet. So, you know, you weren't going to find things on YouTube, that's for sure. So it was very primitive um, in terms of, our asset gathering kind of guerrilla filmmaking at that point in, in, in those situations. Uh, Jake Simperman joins us here. Pro Beach Hockey, Sun, Surf, and Slap Shots. Is there an actual date that we have in terms of distribution for this uh, at all? Because it said spring 2004 on probeachhockey.net. Is there anything nailed down? 
Yeah, so I can't give you an official date okay. yet. I mean, I would absolutely love to, and I, and I will certainly follow up with you. But, you know, the plan here in the next uh, two, three months is to really um, kind of evaluate what our options are in, in terms of streaming service, in terms of video on demand, um, premiere, screening events, really just put together a roadmap to uh, release the film and make sure that hockey fans and, and fans of you know 90s pop culture can see this so um, more to come there but you know hopefully we'll be screening this film uh in the next few months uh, probeachhockey.net where you can get all that up-to-date information johnny mark if you guys have anything yeah, so uh <clears throat> so mark here uh i want to obviously not uh get you to give too much away people got to watch the film obviously but I, I i get the feeling growing up and i was you know eight, nine years old when maybe even less than that, when, uh, when this was on TV, um, it feels like a concept that like two guys were just playing bubble hockey and they went, <laughs> why don't we do this in real life? <laughs> maybe some beers were involved. I feel like <laughs> probably some beers were involved. Was it kind of one of those ideas after, talking to people and 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 all the research that you did or was it a little more structured than that yeah it's funny i never put the bubble hockey connection together <laughs> with with the ramps but i i i really like that um you know first of all this was the 90s and i think it was a lot easier to get these shows and these concepts greenlit i mean think think about you know the programming that was on espn at the time i mean there was uh you know lumberjack olympics and there was oh, professional yeah. bowling and and surfing so there was a lot more risk being taken right on, on the broadcast side um and then in terms of the idea you know without giving a much uh, too much away this was really the culmination of the era of the X Games, the era of professional wrestling. Um, so you had a lot of these elements thrown into the blender and it, you know, and <laughs> to, to sort of the casual observer, it, it was chaotic, but it was in, in a very beautiful way. It was sort of um, capitalizing on all these really unique pop culture factors of, of that era. Johnny. Yeah, uh, I was telling Scotty before the show that Pro Beach Hockey was one of the first things I remember being on ESPN2. Uh, one of those, like, you came home from school and it was there, like, all the time. ESPN2 didn't have a ton of things that they showed, but it was definitely Pro Beach Hockey at that time. Um, the thing that I remember the most are the jerseys from this league uh you know and you can't really like find them anywhere they're not really on ebay or anything like that like uh when talking to the players and the interviews that you have did they just like keep the jerseys or they like stash somewhere in their house like whatever happened to all those that's a good question do you want to see a jersey oh please oh yes. you have one absolutely right. give me a second yeah nice no as uh, jake simperman uh joining us from pro beach hockey Sun Surf and Slap Shots coming out soon. You can check them out at probeachhockey.net for all the goodness there. A lot of stuff up there. Very retro-looking website as well with information about the teams, the staff uh, staff alongside of uh, everything. Yeah, that, that was actually something that I was thinking. The, I distinctly remember the television, like the font that they used on broadcasts. The, yeah. Like all of it was... X game style, yeah. ESPN two style graphics. And that's like burned into my memory. <laughs> yeah. And thanks for mentioning the website. It was, it, it felt wrong to make sort of a modern sleek, uh, you know, anyone can go on Squarespace and do that. Right. Um, it was actually pretty challenging to make a website that looks old, but also functions. <laughs> yeah. So you mean GeoCities isn't around anymore. Yeah. So I think we're sort of, <laughs> We're trying to toe that line, and as long as as long as you guys understand it, then I think it'll it'll <laughs> it'll it work. It'll play elsewhere. <laughs> yeah. So I have a gargoyles jersey. Oh, nice. awesome. awesome. Yeah. Um, and that yeah, it actually belongs to Mike Butters, who's ah. sort of one of the legendary characters um, of Pro Beach Hockey. Uh, but to kind of go back and answer your question, John, uh, a lot of a lot of the guys have still hold on, held on to these things. I think some of them recognized at the time that this was just such a, a unique and strange uh, thing to be a part of. And like, I, for me growing up playing hockey, like I tried to keep all the jerseys that I had, mm -hmm. like whatever wasn't thrown out by my parents, like I still have. Right. Or, you know, 
borrowed, right? So yeah. I think <laughs> all the player, the guys that don't have their jerseys um, have been, you know, they've just been lost, stolen, uh, never returned. But they are, they're difficult to find. You're right. Yeah. Um, Johnny and I used to, I, I, I still remember also the red pucks that had the little white nope, pads wrong, on Wrong them, one. Right? Wrong one. Is that not the red? That's, that's not, not no, the, they use, that's see, not Pro Beach Hockey? Pro Beach Hockey actually used the ball, which has helped them with the ramp. You're thinking of Roller Hockey International, sir. Oh, geez. Um, so Pro John and I, that, that was the first puck that we ever played street hockey with, and it immediately fell apart because it's not meant to be used on the street. <laughs> not for so, long. Yeah, okay. So on Maryland ball, streets. Yeah, up around the ramps. That makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you uh, talk a little bit about uh, how you got connected with uh, Max McCormick and Chris Drager? Because it seems like uh, those two guys, and, and how I kind of got light of this is when the NHLPA put out an article about uh, Chris and him, you know, taking, uh, you know, starting his new venture in with this uh, with Simbin Studios and stuff like that. Uh, I also think looking back when I did a little bit of internet stalking, you did some stuff with McCormick's uh, hockey school in Buffalo, was it? Yeah, you did your research. Uh, so Max is actually from that was in Wisconsin. I'm, oh, okay. I'm from Buffalo after gotcha. I moved from Southern California. Um, but yeah, so I actually went to college with Max McCormick at, at Ohio State. Um, and we met because uh, he was he was playing for the varsity hockey team, of course, and uh, <laughs> I was playing for the club hockey team. So we we kind of we had classes together and we um, and we hung out and, uh, you know, do what did what college kids do. Um, and studied studied a lot <laughs> yeah. um no i mean we we really kept in touch over the years and he's always been one of those guys who um is really really focused on the ice and and when he's off the ice he he needs places to put that energy as well and he's very entrepreneurial and i mentioned the story to him about pro i think it was back in 2021 um and he was like you know i this sounds amazing like and at the time i really i think i had sort of like a 60 second kind of really crude teaser uh which is kind of you know where all these projects start and he wanted to be involved and he knew chris drieger um was also you know another guy who had interest outside of hockey who you know wanted other outlets for their creativity and for to be, you know, well-rounded people. So he brought this to Chris and they were like, we want to be involved with this, whatever it takes to get this thing done. And they've been just fantastic producers and um, really have grown into that role. And, you know, what better way to learn how to produce a film than to just do it for the first time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just throw, throw, throw yourself in the deep end and hope for the best. Um, now for you, does it make you feel like, you, you know, feel real good about being able to teach these guys something when, you know, if you guys go on the ice, they can teach you that to be able to put your skills onto these guys who, you know, are very, uh, new at this. And, you know, for you, does that a nice big confidence boost into, in terms of what you can do for, for everyone else out there for like someone like a Jamoke like me or, you know, a, a million dollar goalie like Chris Drager? <laughs> Yeah, you know, I think it's been it's been really rewarding to watch them learn some of the you know nuances and terminology of of um, you know documentary filmmaking, which I'm sort of still learning alongside them as as you know the marketplace and the technology and stuff is constantly changing. Um, but yeah, it has been really rewarding to to kind of see them develop, and I think you know I I really think they've got at least another you know, five years in, in of professional hockey left. And after that, you know, they're going to have, they're going to be able to transition into doing more films if they want to do that. You know, they're, they're uh, really confident and, and quick learners. And it's like, you know, they got a sort of master's degree uh, over the last couple of years in putting films together and, you know, watching them take meetings with uh, streaming services and, and different production companies. is just, it's pretty amazing. And I think, uh, I think they're, they impress people because, you know, they come, they come right from practice or they're, they're on the bus to a, uh, a game and, and they're taking these meetings. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool to see them, you know, develop these skills as well. Uh, Jake Zimmerman, director of Pro Beach Hockey, Sun Surf and Slap Shots. Uh, ProBeachHockey.net is the website. Um, also, Jeannie Buss is in this as well as an executive producer, and she is, uh, the the heiress of everything in LA sports, and of course, uh, owning 
of the Los Angeles Blades of the RHI. Um, can you, what was it like working with her, learning under her, and I guess taking some tutelage from her uh, during this whole venture? Yeah, she's just, I mean, first of all, she's just such, such a legend and a f iconic figure in sports. And um, all that aside, she's incredibly humble. Um, and meeting her was just a, such an unbelievable op opportunity. Um, is that she's one of the early champions of roller hockey. I mean, she is someone who really believed in this sport uh, from day one. And she wants, you know, I think her long-term vision is that the sport could make a, a comeback at the pro level, but she also wants people to understand that her legacy is more than just, a, you know, the, the president of a basketball team. She, she wants her legacy in, in the hockey world uh, to be documented. And I, I think we do a good job of doing that. Um, and she, so she's just been wonderful along the way and um, just a great part of this project. Uh, Johnny, Mark, uh, anything else to add before we uh, let uh, Jake go on his the rest of his day? All right. So, so for me, I would say that uh, I mean this was the height of of roller hockey. You know, like this is when like people who didn't actually play hockey, like because I never played hockey growing up. I uh, I wrestled during the uh, winter time frame and if i ever showed up hurt from another sport my pretty certain my wrestling coach would have broke my other ankle but you know like it's this was the height of it like the mark and i grew up in the driveway you know we put together we literally created a hockey goal out of pvc piping just so that we could play roller hockey you know everybody that we knew were playing roller hockey whether or not you played ice hockey um, it was just a sport you could pick up and, and roll with it. So like this was a, a perfect storm of everything that was going on in the 90s with the boom of roller hockey, people getting into hockey. Like you said, the X Games, ESPN2 starting to show a lot of this. Um, I just it's one of those things that you kind of wish had uh continued for a, a bit longer you know like uh, to just kind of you just kind of remember it being the height of everything and then it was gone yeah 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 i don't i don't have any more questions i'm definitely looking forward to being able to see the film uh when it comes out in the spring so well stay tuned to probeachhockey.net yeah and then you'll be good to go uh jake severman uh sinbin studios pro beach hockey sun surf and slap shot thanks a lot we appreciate your time uh, and, uh, you know, we'll catch up with you uh, when this whole thing premieres and uh, get out to you. So best of luck, sir. Amazing. I will definitely keep you you guys updated. Uh, good luck with the show and really appreciate the, the thoughtful questions and uh, excited to share more updates soon.